Hi ladies, welcome to our new series, Jesus the Hero. I wanna welcome you from wherever you're watching from. I know we have some women who are in neighborhood groups. We have a lot of you at our locations. You might be meeting online. Welcome to Beautiful and welcome to our new series. We're gonna be talking about tonight, Jesus the Jew, that he came into a Jewish culture and why did he? You know, have you ever wondered about that? Have you ever wondered why this story? Why, how did we get from the Old Testament to the New Testament with Jesus? And my hope tonight is that I'm gonna be able to give you just a little history lesson and also some inspiration as we start to look at Jesus in the Gospels. Um, the question we're gonna to answer tonight or we're gonna look at tonight is, what are your expectations of Jesus? And when I was trying to think through that question, I thought, I have expectations. I, I believe that you know when I came to Jesus, when I met him, when I invited him into my life, I had a certain expectation. You know, I, I felt like there was something missing in my life. And then as I've walked with him over 30 years, I've realized that I have expectations all along the way. And so as I share tonight, Think about what, what does that mean to you? What are your expectations of Jesus? You know, we, we all have a story. We all have a story of Jesus. We all, whether it's, it's fresh and brand new and you're brand new to him and to knowing him and to walking with him, or like me, you've been walking him with, with him for 30 years or longer. We all have this context that our experience with Jesus and you know, there's, there's a desire within us to be known, to be loved, to be accepted, to be seen. And when I think about that question, what are my expectations of Jesus? I think those are my expectations a lot of times. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna know that he knows me. I wanna know that he sees me, that he understands me, that he, that he gets me. And, and that I'm not, um, I'm not on the outside, I'm on the inside. And so as we, as we start tonight, those are just a few things to look at. Um, if we go back into the book of Genesis, we were created by our creator to be in relationship with him. If you look at the Garden of Eden when God created uh, man and women, he He created them to be in close proximity with them. It says that he walked with them in the garden, that he was with them, that he talked with them. Can you imagine like God is right here and we can just hang out? That was Adam and Eve. And then something happened. God set these boundaries and said, this is how you're gonna experience all of the wonderful benefits and, and proximity of being in relationship with me is if you keep the boundaries that I'm setting for you and something happened and they didn't keep those boundaries and it created a rift, it created a fracture. You know, when I think about what happens when something unexpected hits me, you know, when I make plans and I'm like, okay, this is how it's gonna go, this is where we're going, this is what we're doing and something unexpected happens, I recalibrate, I'm like, whoa, what just happened? You know, and I, feel like I have to come up with a plan and I have to figure out a new way <clears throat> and I have, to, um, I have to adjust. And sometimes I put up walls and I'm like, oh, not gonna let that happen again. I think it's so hard for us to understand that God is not like that. He doesn't have to scramble to think of a new plan. He had a plan all along. It was always the plan and it's Jesus, and we're included in that plan. So how do we look at all of these you know, books of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, from the Old Testament to the New Testament, and connect it all together with Jesus? God zeroed in on one man in Genesis 12, and his name is Abraham. And in Genesis 12, one through three, the passage says, and the Lord said to Abraham, go from your country, your people, your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. 
I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. Those that bless you, I will bless, and those that curse you, I will curse. And all the people of the earth will be blessed through you. He makes these promises to Abraham. I'm going to break it down one more time, just shortened version. I'm calling you out and setting you apart. I'm going to bless you and you'll be a blessing. And I'm going to restore creation, that relationship, that proximity through you for all the people of the earth. Everyone's included. And if you go back and you read through the life of the, you know, the, the 12 tribes of Israel and the descendants of Abraham and God setting up places where he weaves other ethnicities and other people groups into the people of God, that speaks to us to say we're included. We're all included. The rest of the Bible, so we hear those promises in Genesis 12 to Abraham, and the rest of the Bible is God fulfilling all those promises to his people. So when, when I think about Abraham, I'm like, okay, Abraham was Hebrew. How did, he, how, how did we then get the Israelites? And then now Jesus is Jewish. Do you ever think about that and kind of scratch your head? So I'm gonna break it down super simple. So when I was born, I was born into the Michael family. My parents' last name was Michael. When my, when my father passed away and my mom remarried and my dad adopted us, he gave us his name. And we, my brother and I became Taylors. We became known as Taylor. And then when Chris and I got married, I became a Bonham. And, you know, you may be able to look at your family dynamic and see those name changes. That's the really simple version of how we go from Hebrew to Israelite to Jew, that God named Abraham Hebrew. His name meant to go out, and then he renamed Jacob Israel, so God gave him that name, and then the Jesus came from the line of Judah, and that's where we get the Jewish people, and so if, if that's something that you were like, I don't understand that, it, it, it's not as complicated reading the Bible as we sometimes think it is. Um, so Jesus was a Jew. Jesus was born into the Jewish culture. As a boy, he would have memorized the first five books of the Bible, which are the Torah. He would have gone to temple with his family to celebrate the feast. He would have said the daily prayers. He would have prayed the Shema morning and night. Um, he would have practiced all of the cultural things that God set up for the Jewish people to practice so that they would remember. God was basically saying, do these things so that you remember that I am God and you are my people. And Jesus would have participated in all of that. He, would have, he was born into the Roman Empire. At that time, the, the Israel nation were part of the Roman Empire, and there was a king of the Jews. Herod was the king of the Jews at that time, set up by the Roman Empire. And the Jewish people were hoping and believing. They knew all the prophecies of the Old Testament, and they were believing that, that when the Messiah comes, he's going to set us free from Rome. He's going to liberate us from this oppression. He's going to solve our earthly problems. They had no idea that Jesus was going to do so much more than that. They were looking for an earthly king, and God had a way bigger plan in mind. So, are you ready to encounter Jesus together? Jesus will make a difference in our lives. I know that he has made a difference in my life. I know I've heard a lot of your stories, and as you sit and talk in your small groups, you share these stories of how Jesus is impacting your life. But as we go through this and, and examine, you know, where the Jewish people were looking for a liberator for their earthly, worldly problems, where do we look to Jesus to fix what we see in our own understanding? And as we 
explore who Jesus is, I wanna challenge you to open up your expectations and to allow him to show you the more that he has and what he wants to do to really restore us. This study is about Jesus, the hero of the Gospels, and the Gospels are simply the first four books of the New Testament. They were written by four men, two who were part of his disciples and two who, were, who knew his disciples. Um, and and they, they each come from different backgrounds. They had four different personalities. If you put me and four of my friends or three of my friends in the room, we are all different personalities. We have different perspectives, we have different thoughts, we see things differently. We enrich in each other's lives by sharing our experiences. And so these four men wrote down their account of Jesus so that we could learn who Jesus is. It's the same story, it's just four different perspectives. And think about you know, how, as you discuss, you're all gonna get different things even out of the message that I'm speaking tonight or the ones that are coming in this series. So let's look at Matthew first. Matthew is the tax collector. When Jesus called him, he was working for Rome. And he was, you know, establishes that Jesus is the only way to God. He wants to get that right. Matthew, I, I imagine him following Jesus around and just taking notes all the time and writing things down. He is probably the most Jewish of the four gospels because of his upbringing and his studies and just his personality. Um, he, is, he, he bridges the Old Testament and the New Testament perfectly because he talks a lot about the Old Testament prophecies in the book of Matthew. He also write, records the Sermon on the Mount. If you go read through Matthew, you'll see three chapters right there where he records all of Jesus's words on the Sermon on the Mount. It's a beautiful, beautiful depiction of, of the ministry of Jesus. Next we go to Mark, which is the shortest chapter and it begins with the start of Jesus's ministry. So it, it reads most like a story and, and Mark is, is credited for telling Peter, the apostle Peter's life accounts of living and walking and ministering with Jesus and all of the things that he learned from Jesus. Mark was, I can imagine him running around, you know, chasing after Peter going, tell me what happened next, tell me what happened next. The most, one of the most unique things that I learned about the book of Mark is that the word immediately shows up a lot in the book of Mark. Like I went through my Bible and, and highlighted all the immediately's in the book of Mark and it's like 32 in, in, the, in the book. And I imagine there's like this urgency to Mark. He, he doesn't, it's almost like he's running out of time. I, how much more time am I gonna have with Peter before I, you know, before I have to write all this down? So that's Mark. And then we go to Luke. And Luke is the longest gospel. Luke is the only non-Jewish author of the gospels. He was a physician who traveled with Paul, which was great for Paul because he got into some trouble a lot and he probably needed a physician to take care of him. But he's more like the historian. He wants to get it right. He's got a lot of details. The, a really cool thing about the book of Luke is that he has a particular focus on women, on the vulnerable, on the sick, and the poor. And it's just a beautiful depiction of the life of Jesus. And then we go to John. And John takes us all the way back to Genesis. When I think about the book of John, I think about like the big picture. Like he's like, I'm a context person, so I love this stuff. I think John was a context person. He's like, I wanna look at the whole thing and try to help, help you see how it all fits together. He starts in Genesis. He, he is very intent on showing that Jesus is the exclusive savior. There is no other. All of the I am statements that Jesus makes about himself are recorded in the book of John. And John wants us to know that Jesus is God in the flesh and he challenges us to believe in him and to experience the life transforming power of Jesus for ourselves. Uh, there's a passage in John chapter one, verse 10 through 12 that says, he came to the very world he created, but the world didn't recognize him. He came to his own people and even they rejected him. But to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. God had a plan. When, when Adam and Eve 
crossed the boundary in the garden and fractured the harmony and the proximity that we got to be in with God, God had a plan. He wasn't scrambling to figure out what to do. He wasn't recalibrating and readjusting and changing things and, and making it, you know, fit. He had a plan. Jesus is the plan, and you're included in the plan. And I just want to say, when you look at your own life, you may be feeling too like, well, I messed this up, or I did this wrong, or I didn't, you know, I, I didn't obey God here, and now God's got to fix it, or God's got to fi figure out a way to make it work, or I just have to live stuck and separated from God. And I just want to encourage you, just like God had a plan for that, that in the garden to restore his creation, he has a plan that is specific for you. He wants to restore you. He wants you to know that he's not recalibrating and he's not trying to figure out what to do with you. He knows who you are. He sees you. He understands you. He gets you and he loves you and he sent Jesus to come to this earth to be the hero to bring us back to him. So the two questions I want to I want to leave you with. You know, we're talking about the the gospels and these four men and their four different accounts of the story of Jesus. What's your story of Jesus? If you were going to write your gospel, what would you write? What would it say? I want to challenge you to this week sometime sit down and write it out. Write about everything that God has done for you, about everything that Jesus means to you. And, and let's look at how we are recognizing Jesus, the hero, in our own stories. And the second question is, what are your expectations of Jesus? What have they been? Maybe how have they been met? How have you been disappointed? And really look at, God, how do I want to experience Jesus over the next few months as we look at this? We, we have done studies in the past about Jesus. We finished a study in the fall, Jesus Changes Everything. We could talk about Jesus every day. We could study Jesus' life every day and still not get to everything that he is for us. So I just want to encourage you that as we go together, let's ask God to transform us all as we look at Jesus, our hero. God, thank you that you are not scrambling to come up with a plan, that you have had a plan all along, that we're invited into it, that we're included into it, God, that you see us, that you know us, that you are personal, that you are in proximity with us. God, I pray for every woman who is seeking you, who is examining what their expectations of you and of Jesus are, God, that they would invite you in to show them more, that we would take down the walls, that we would eliminate the distractions, that we would answer these questions. What would my account of Jesus look like? What would my gospel be? And what are my expectations of Jesus? And how do I want to encounter him in a greater way in the next few weeks? Thank you, God, for meeting us where we are. In Jesus' name, amen.